Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless jesus said as a sign of his coming and the end of the age there would be an increase in deception false christ who will deceive many wars and rumors of wars nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom famines pestilences earthquakes christian persecution apostasy false prophets and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor as the labor progresses the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes as we get closer to jesus return all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense all of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time Psalm 18.7 Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations of the hills also quaked and were shaken, because he was angry. Breaking news this morning, Hawaii's Kilauea volcano is erupting, and this is a live look at that right now. It's for the third time this year this has erupted. It's a live look at that lava spewing into the air. Geologists say the eruption is at the summit crater. Authorities say right now that eruption does not present any immediate danger, but they have raised the alert level to red, its highest level for any potential hazards. After several months of rest, Pele has woken up. Kilauea volcano is once again erupting. Scientists say they noticed a dramatic increase in the number of earthquakes and the swelling of the ground less than an hour before the eruption began. They say this one was way more sudden than other recent eruptions. The Hawaiian Volcano Observatory adds the eruption is occurring in what's being called the down-dropped block in Kilauea's summit caldera. Well, what's unique about this eruption is that we also had fissures opening to the east of the recent lava lake activity. Um, it's on a feature that we call the down-dropped block, which is part of the old uh, crater floor that collapsed in 2018. And so this is the first time um, that we've seen vents in this area from the recent eruptions. Kilauea's last eruption happened in June. There has been a dramatic increase in volcanic eruptions around the world, and nobody knows why. You probably haven't noticed because nobody seems to be talking about it, but something is going on with the world. Volcanoes are erupting at a faster pace than ever, and earthquakes are going crazy, and nobody has an explanation for it. Nobody except God, that is. The seven-year tribulation is fast approaching this world, and the news headlines prove it. God in his grace and mercy is trying to shake the world out of its complacency. We are currently living in a time Jesus refers to as the birth pains. Jesus is likening last day's events to a woman in labor. The closer we get to Jesus' second coming, last day's signs and calamities will become more frequent and more intense. Following the rapture of all true Christians to heaven, the Bible warns us that the wrath of God will be poured out on an unrepentant world. One of the judgments described in the book of Revelation seems to include a massive volcanic eruption, as we read in Revelation 8.8. Then the second angel sounded, and something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea, and a third of the sea became blood. Isaiah 24.19-21 The earth is violently broken. The earth is split open. The earth is shaken exceedingly. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard, and shall totter like a hut. Its transgression shall be heavy upon it, and it will fall and not rise again. It shall come to pass in that day that the Lord will punish on high the host of exalted ones, and on the earth the kings of the earth. We're going to begin with a devastating earthquake in Morocco in which it's killed more than 2,000 people. Here are pictures of just some of the destruction that was caused by the quake and a series of tremors over the weekend. Tremors also very scary stuff. There are some places that rescue workers still cannot get to. Most of the damage is centered south of the city of Marrakesh, an area not known for major earthquakes. We're outside a blood bank where people have been lining up for hours. Some of them have even passed out from the heat, but everyone we talk to tells us it doesn't matter. They're doing whatever they can to help their country as it reels from this powerful, powerful quake. 
A singer interrupted and a wedding crashed by the powerful quake, sending band members and revelers dashing to safety. Across Morocco, footage captures the moment this North African country erupted into panic. And now into a frenzy as they search for the living and mourn the dead. We were having dinner, says Hamid Ben Henna. I asked my son to bring a knife from the kitchen to cut the dessert, but he never did because as soon as he left the kitchen, the earthquake struck. He was buried in six feet of rubble. The worst is in the scenic high Atlas Mountains, where dirt roads snake into snow capped peaks. Many blocked by rock slides, impossible to reach those still trapped beneath the debris. Either to save, or lay to rest. More than 300,000 people have been impacted by the quake, including foreign residents like Helen Gallagher. We just couldn't ever imagine something like this happening here, really. It's just been totally devastating. We're just in survival mode and just trying to get help out to the people who most need it, and we'll process it afterwards. <laughs> While here in Marrakesh and its famed Kasbah, medieval walls that have stood for 1,000 years could topple with the next aftershock, if they haven't already. Rescue crews just beginning to reach remote areas of the country this morning as the death toll there continues to rise. More than 2,400 people have been killed, even more injured from the massive 6.8 quake. Yesterday, hard-hit communities were rattled by a 3.9 aftershock. The death toll here in the disaster zone just updated to 2,400 and climbing. And much of the worst devastation is in remote communities like this. This tower is all that's left of what was once the village shrine here. And in the debris, you can find little fragments of people's lives, including their mail and their bills. And all the while, the race against time to find survivors continues. This morning, the desperate search for survivors entering a critical phase. Rescue teams from Morocco and around the world racing to make every minute count. It's now been more than 48 hours since this 6.8 magnitude quake struck south of Marrakesh. The most powerful tremor in this region for more than 100 years, sending locals and tourists alike running for their lives in the streets of the historic city. The worst of the devastation in remote villages in the high Atlas Mountains, where adobe homes couldn't withstand the force of the quake. Moments of exhausted joy when survivors are found in the rubble but also heartbreak when rescuers arrive too late. Working in, in these situations, search and rescue is still paramount, of paramount importance. We traveled up a winding mountain road blocked in places by boulders to reach the village of Moulay Brahim. This village was home to 3,000 people, but locals say at least 40 have been killed. That's more than 1% of the population that lost their lives. Among them... <laughs> Lawson's three daughters, baby son, and wife. I'm all alone now, he says. I had a home and a family. Now I have nothing. This ID card, madame, the only photograph he has left. The UN says 300,000 people across the region were impacted by the quake. And in small villages and major cities, many families are still sleeping in the streets terrified that aftershocks could yet bring their homes crashing down. Luke 2111, and there will be great earthquakes in various places and famines and pestilences, and there will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven. Tonight, a once in a century deadly deluge, slamming Hong Kong, bringing the city to a grinding halt. The record rainfall, the heaviest Hong Kong has seen in 140 years, killing two people and injuring more than 100. Desperate rescue missions are now underway as emergency response teams pull stranded residents out of submerged cars, wading through waist-deep waters to get to safety. Rushing waters turning roads into rivers and inundating entire subway stations, forcing schools, businesses, even the stock exchange to shut down. The mega monsoon wreaking havoc on the city's infrastructure, collapsing roads, flooding malls, and triggering landslides. City officials issued a black rainstorm warning, the highest level possible for over 15 hours, the longest in the city's history. 
Hong Kong's chief secretary warning residents of the storm's severity, announcing the extreme conditions are expected to persist at least until midnight tonight. Residents here in utter shock after witnessing the dramatic downpour. One woman saying, even during previous typhoons, it was never this severe. It's quite terrifying to see. The extreme weather system hitting southern China just hours before, flooding the coastal region of Shenzhen, shutting down roads and public transportation, and forcing 11,000 people to evacuate. As flood warnings continue across the region, thousands of residents in Hong Kong and China still waiting out this relentless storm. As we look at the news, there is no doubt we are in the birth pains Jesus spoke of in Matthew 24, 8. We see many of God's remedial judgments manifesting, as if God is warning us of things to come and calling on people to repent. We see war and rumors of wars, famine and pestilence resulting in the deaths of thousands around the world. We are seeing earthquakes, extreme heat, floods, wildfires, tornadoes, hailstorms and hurricanes, all at record levels of frequency and intensity, just like Jesus said would happen just prior to his return. The judgments God will use to punish mankind with during the seven year tribulation will be much worse than any of us can imagine. Still, this is God's grace and mercy, proving to everyone that these judgments come from him and he is still offering forgiveness of sins through his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. If you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I implore you to do so today as we are not guaranteed tomorrow. Entire neighborhoods flooded across eastern Libya. The worst storm the country has seen in years. Mediterranean storm Daniel brought record rainfall. In the city of El Beida, people can only watch as their vehicles are washed away. Patients and staff were forced to evacuate several hospitals. Local officials are calling for immediate assistance. We announce with regret that the situation is completely out of control. We call on all government officials to intervene to save what can be saved. Governments are responsible for people's lives. We request the security services to provide assistance. Libya has been engulfed by political divisions for more than a decade. The country has two governments. That slowed down emergency assistance efforts. The parallel government in eastern Libya has announced a two-day state of emergency, enforcing a curfew and calling for people to exercise caution if they leave their homes. The impact of Storm Daniel on eastern Libya has been devastating. Local officials say many people remain missing. With search and rescue operations currently underway, there are fears the death toll will only rise. And forecasters have issued a red warning, saying more storms are on their way. Under the constant buzz of helicopters, the 521st Marines Battalion prepared to rescue people stranded in the village of Marathea. They were surrounded by two kilometers of water, some of it a story high. But they weren't the first rescuers on the scene. Locals brought their fishing boats and ferried people out to waiting tractor trailers, which local farmers brought here. And those they rescued told tales of woe. We were stranded for two days on the first story of a half-built house above the water. We had water to drink, but no food other than a couple of snacks we grabbed from the house. There were sick people, elderly people and children. The helicopters were operating, but they couldn't drop us a basket. We waited for a boat and it came with volunteers. Volunteers plucked people like Gulianu off their rooftops, including the very old and frail. All were going to stay with relatives, some in Karditsa, but some were going as far as Athens. Froso Kulpa's daughter drove up from Athens to take her, but she left with a broken heart. All my childhood memories turned to rubble in seconds. The house where I grew up, it's all gone. Just when I went back to pick up my things to leave for Athens, at that moment it was collapsing, as though it had waited to say goodbye. Homes made of mud and stone, like Kulpa's, dissolved in flood water, but in the neighboring village of Palamas, many homes were built of concrete, and some people here decided to stay. Volunteer farmers drove through almost a meter of water to bring them food and took their mobile phones to charge them elsewhere because the village is without electricity. State services and volunteers continued the rescue operation into the night. For the living, there is now every hope of a timely rescue. But some volunteers have told us that they've seen many dead bodies through the windows of flooded homes. 
the true death toll of these apparently unprecedented floods may only become clear once the waters have receded. Meanwhile, the survivors are beginning to tally what they've lost, their homes, livestock, this year's crop of corn and cotton. And they say they'll need all the help the government can give them to bring life back to this agrarian economy. The phrase hot girl summer must have been coined for Mother Earth. The European Union says last month was the hottest August on record, following the hottest ever July and June. This past August wasn't as bad as July, which was the hottest month ever recorded. But August's high temperatures put this summer in the books as the Northern Hemisphere's hottest summer since record keeping started in 1940. The increase in temperature since the pre-industrial era is estimated to be about one and a half degrees Celsius, which is within the guidelines of the Paris Climate Agreement. But an increase in temperature is still an increase, and the 196 countries that signed on to the pledge still have work to do to prevent next summer and all the following summers from breaking heat records. Jesus said a sign of his return would be more frequent and more intense weather as we read in Matthew 24, 7 and 8. And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Pestilence is the Greek word loimus, which means a plague. Definition of a plague is any large-scale calamity, especially when thought to be sent by God. God has used plagues in the form of extreme weather in the past and will again in the future. The seventh plague on Egypt was hail. Don't forget about the famine in Joseph's time. One of the biggest is the flood in the book of Genesis. In the future, during the seven-year tribulation, God will once again use extreme weather in the form of pestilence as judgment. In Revelation 16:21, God uses hailstones weighing 100 pounds each, and great hail from heaven fell upon men, each hailstone about the weight of a talent. Men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, since that plague was exceedingly great. In Revelation 16:8 and 9, God uses scorching heat. Then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and power was given to him to scorch men with fire, and men were scorched with great heat and they blaspheme the name of God who has power over these plagues, and they did not repent and give him glory. So when Jesus Christ warns us that just before his second coming, there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places, you had better believe that these occurrences are a sign from God and that he is about to intervene. North Korea kicked off celebrations to mark 75 years as a nation with a large gathering. Leader Kim Jong-un presided over the event but it was North Korean Premier Kim tok hoon who addressed the crowd. 75 years ago, the flag of our republic flew high in the blue sky of our homeland, carrying with it the dreams of the Korean people who aspire to lead the world. Today, it flies proudly, carrying the dignity and glory of a powerful nation. The meeting was followed by a parade at midnight that featured paramilitary forces, including a display by a parachute unit. But more important than what was on display was who was there. The Chinese delegation was led by one of China's vice premiers to the state council, Liu Guozhong, who also met Kim separately on Friday. Russia did not send its senior officials, leading to speculation they could be getting ready for a possible meeting between Russian President Vladimir Putin and Kim. Reports say a meeting between the two would likely focus on an arms deal that would benefit Russia in its war on Ukraine. In return, North Korea could receive food and energy assistance and also technology to help advance its nuclear weapons program. Many experts have been predicting for several years now that a block is being built between these three authoritarian states. They're essentially trying to balance in some ways the growing strength of the US, uh, Japan and South Korea uh, relationship by building their own trilateral relationship. Tensions in the Korean Peninsula are at their highest in years. North Korea has conducted a record number of weapons tests this year, while the U.S.'s combined military exercises with South Korea and Japan have intensified. Here in South Korea, there are growing concerns about North Korea's efforts to deepen ties with China and Russia. Earlier this week, South Korean President Yoon suk yeol urged China to do more as a permanent member of the UN Security Council to address North Korea's nuclear threat. But he also said his country will strengthen ties with the U.S. and Japan to counter Pyongyang. It appears divisions in this region are set to remain, perhaps even increase. The morning after dozens of kamikaze drones were launched at the Ukrainian capital. Life in Kyiv may seem normal, 
But for residents such as the owner of this vehicle, caught in the path of falling debris, it is not. I was driving along. There was an air raid siren. I wanted to get home as fast as possible. I heard explosions, and after passing the traffic light, there was a flash right in front of me and an explosion under the car. I have a headache right now and a noise in my head. I don't feel well because I haven't slept. Valentin says he feels lucky to be alive. Damage to commercial vehicles like this from falling debris almost certainly affects people's livelihoods. Drone attacks being carried out in places like this, areas where there are residential apartment blocks, people's homes, Ukrainians say is indicative of a campaign of fear being carried out against civilians. The attack in the early hours of Sunday morning was heard across the city center. Ukraine says air defenses neutralized the majority of the Shahid drones. But the attack still left a mark in several neighborhoods. One damaged apartment block immediately behind the U.S. Embassy. Coincidence or not, a worrying sign. It was a very frightening experience. I heard a sound like motorbike flying over, a rustling sound. Then there was a powerful explosion, followed by a huge flash of light. My window curtain tore off, and the jars I had on my window sills were shattered. There has been no let-up to near nightly attacks countrywide. Matthew 24, 6 and 7. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet, for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Nation is the Greek word ethnos, which means a race, as of the same habit, i.e. a tribe, especially a foreign, non-Jewish one, Gentiles, usually by implication, pagan. What I believe Jesus is saying here is that there have always been wars and rumors of wars. But when you see the same ethnic group fighting the same ethnic group, now pay attention. His return is near. One after another, Palestinians are leaving their homes inside Ain al Halwe. The refugee camp in southern Lebanon is now a war zone. Three days of fighting between rival factions has created a humanitarian crisis. We risk our lives to leave the camp just to buy food. There are no vegetables, apart from potatoes and biscuits. There are also no health services. The wounded and the sick are being evacuated. But it's dangerous. Even ambulances are coming under fire. The fighting is worse than the last round a month ago. It has spread to many neighborhoods. We don't know what to do. Street battles are raging in the narrow alleyways of a camp where at least 60,000 people live in less than two square kilometers. Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas's Fatah movement is responsible for security inside the camp. It's fighting a number of groups who call themselves the Muslim youth. The latest round of battles was sparked by the assassination of a senior commander of the Fatah movement and demands for his assassins to be brought to justice. But Fatah officials are now accusing the Muslim youth of trying to control the camp. Outbreaks of violence are common in a camp known for its lawlessness. And life, for most people here, has been one of misery. Humanitarian aid is being blocked and mediation efforts have so far failed to implement a ceasefire. Who is benefiting from this fighting? The only outcome is displacement. Why should we be displaced again? None of these factions represent us. There is fear among a stateless people of a major military showdown, and it wouldn't be the first. Palestinian camps have been destroyed in violence in recent decades. Unlike previous rounds of battles in late July, fighting is no longer confined to certain neighborhoods. It's spreading and people trapped inside say nowhere is safe. Other world news now, and a drone strike on an open-air market in Sudan has killed at least 30 people. Activists and medical workers posted video on social media of what happened in a neighborhood of Khartoum. Last week, Sudan's ruling council issued a decree to dissolve the paramilitary rapid support forces. More than four months of fighting for control of the capital has killed at least 4,000 people. We're back now with our report from Central Africa as the U.N. investigates allegations of genocide in Sudan. Our Andrea Mitchell traveled to a refugee camp in neighboring Chad where so many have fled to escape the horror. They are among more than 400,000 people who have escaped across the border to Chad. 
from the brutal civil war in neighboring Sudan that erupted in force four months ago. Mm. We visited a makeshift camp there today with UN Ambassador Linda Thomas Greenfield, who wanted to hear firsthand what they've experienced. And these are her two grandchildren? No food, no drinks. Hasnat Ibrahim Yacob fled with her family after their older brother was killed by the militias, their home destroyed. What do you hope for? We need the beast. Sewer fit including a recent measles epidemic and starving children. It is overwhelming. I see those little children. I saw a six-month-old uh, who looked like a newborn, and I was told by the doctors that actually she was doing better. But who can heal the pain from the terror they've experienced? Many of the women in this makeshift camp tell of being raped by the marauding militias who kill the men and steal the boys to recruit them. It has led the UN to start investigating a possible genocide. Humanitarian officials are reporting mass graves. The UN says it needs a billion dollars more to feed, house and heal the refugees, and so far has raised only a third of that, hardly enough to deal with a tragedy of the scale, with no end in sight for the war and a flood of its desperate victims. In war-torn northwest Syria, government forces have escalated their attacks on residential areas, leaving a trail of destruction and displacing thousands of people. Abu Muhammad, like many others, had to leave his village during the intense bombing. However, he says he will always return because this is home. We were displaced many times and now we are living in bombed out houses because we can't bear to live anywhere else. They destroyed the main hospital, the mosque and hundreds of houses. Whenever we rebuild, we are confronted by bombings. For families here, living under attack has become part of life. Abu Abdullah has built an underground shelter for his family. I built this shelter for my family so we don't have to be displaced again. The past couple of days were scary. More than 40 missiles fell in the area. Life is getting harder. This is one of the areas in southern Idlib that has come under repeated attack this week. Jabal al zawiya is made up of dozens of villages, and authorities here say they have been targeted by airstrikes, resulting in many casualties. The attacks have also damaged facilities, including medical centers. Despite the challenges they face, many people in northwest Syria are trying not to give up. They have survived 12 years of conflict. However, as the horrors of war continue to mount, they have few choices. Leave their homes, or stay and risk being killed. Luke 21:25, And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. One of the many signs we are living in the last days right before the return of Jesus Christ is nations will be in a state of perplexity or uncertainty over what to do in a difficult situation. This is exactly what is happening in our world today. Luke 21, 26 through 28. Men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, 
we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.